I would now like to invite the Vice Chancellor of the University of the South Pacific, Prof Professor Paul Alwalia, to give the welcome remarks and introduction. Honorable Taro Kono, Minister for Foreign Affairs for Japan, His Excellency Mr. Masahiro Omura, Ambassador Extraordinary for Japan, senior Fijian government officials, senior officials of the government of Japan, members of the diplomatic corps, regional and international organizations, members of civil society organizations, staff, students of USP, and those tuning in from the region, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Bula, Namaste, and a very good morning to you all. It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to the university for this very significant event, and I wish to warmly welcome our guest of honor, the Honorable Taro Kono, the Minister for Foreign Affairs for Japan. We are humbled indeed, sir, to have you at our university. Honorable Minister, the university shares a long-standing relationship with Japan, given its historical support for the Pacific through USP. Japan ranks amongst the top four development partners of our university. And I'm delighted to mention that the state-of-the-art facility that we are now seated in, along with the, Jap um, with the Japan Pacific ICT Center, which is connected to this building, is a generous contribution of the government of Japan through the government of Fiji. The topic of today's address by Honorable Taro Kono is three pillars for a better and active, full of opportunities and innovative future for us, the people of the Pacific. And we are all eager to hear and understand the priorities of Japan for the Pacific and how it plans to continue to meaningfully engage with its partners, including USP, in contributing effectively towards the development of the region and enhancing lives of our people. Ladies and gentlemen, the government of Japan, through its embassy and the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, is working in close collaboration with the university in changing lives of the Pacific people for the better. USP has received technical assistance from Japan in technical areas such as IACT, marine science, agriculture and fisheries, through the technical cooperation programs, infrastructure programs, the government of Japan scholarship programs, and the Pacific Leaders Program. Some of the specific Japanese supported joint efforts with the university include, as I said, the construction of the Japan Pacific ICT Center, which attests to the longstanding and strong partnership that the government of Japan has with the university. And would like to once again thank the government of Japan for this very generous contribution towards the infrastructure of this university. There's also a USP satell satellite project USP Net Satellite Project, which is a backbone of the university's business system that enables communication across the regional campuses. And of course, Japan's um, contribution is evident in the university as the entire lower campus where the School of Marine Re Sci Resources Sciences is based was funded by Japan. The recent collaboration between USP, JICA, and the Water Authority of Fiji for the purpose of installing and operating an ecological purification system just behind this building is another example of our continuing cooperation. And there's been a lot of people-to-people -people exchange between the university and Japan via the Japan East Asia Network of Exchange for Students and Youth, uh, Genesis, which I think some of you were watching earlier um, before uh, the Honorable Minister walked in. Um, and this has been instrumental in promoting mutual trust and understanding amongst the peoples of Japan and Asia Pacific regions to build a basis for future friendship and cooperation. The university is also organizing the security awareness and capacity building workshops for the Forum Island countries in conjunction with Japan, which is an in initiative resulting from Palm 8. And of course, there have been discussions and firm progress on the possibility of USP offering Jap Japanese as a second language. Ladies and gentlemen, the university is enthused and 
proud to have partnered with the Government of Japan, Japan Overseas Cooperation Association to facilitate the implementation of a series of Genesis programs for our Pacific Island students to engage in since 2012. We're indeed excited to continue with this joint venture with the launch of the Genesis 2019 project this morning by the Honorable Minister. As part of this cultural experience, we've witnessed a growing interest in students from the Pacific Island countries, and we hope that more students will be able to enrich their development through participation in such programs. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to welcome Honorable Taro Kono, Japan's Minister for Foreign Affairs, to deliver his keynote address. Welcome again, Minister. Thank you. At this point in the program, I would like to invite Litea to come and garland our chief guest. We welcome Mr. Kono to give his address. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Professor Paul Afunu Wadia. Am I pronouncing it right? Vice Chancellor and the President of the University of the South Pacific, representative of the diplomatic corps from Pacific Island countries, distinguished alumni of the Genesis program, students of the University of the South Pacific, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, thank you for this opportunity. I had a, my first cup of cover yesterday. I kind of liked uh, peppery taste of it, but my tongue, especially the back of it, went kind of numb. And uh, I kind of felt I had been to a dentist or something. <laughs> but it was very nice experience. I grew up on the coast of the Pacific Ocean in a town called Hiratsuka in Japan. I can smell the sea from my own bedroom, and that's how I grew up. And I was very excited when I first learned that I was coming to the Pacific Island region this time, the best location for diving in the world. And uh, indeed, I feel kind of strongly I'm sort of compelled to throw out my speech and go out for a diving right now. But uh, I'm wearing foreign minister's hat today, so I guess I need to exercise my self-restraint and uh, try to concentrate on my speech instead. Let me first congratulate the University of the South Pacific, or USP, for successfully launching the Genesis 2019 program. I would also like to thank USP for its dedication to fostering a close partnership with Japan for successful implementation of Genesis programs over the years. It is a great pleasure to be here with you all today. It is my honor to visit several Pacific Island countries on this trip because this is actually the first visit by a Japanese foreign minister in the region for 
First time in 32 years. Wow, I got to do this more often. The last time was in 1987 uh, when then Foreign Minister Kranari made a visit to this region. 1987 is year after I graduated from university. It seems ooh, a long time ago, really. I'm also honored to address you today in this ICT lecture hall of the USP. This university was founded through cooperation among Pacific Island countries, and Japan provided assistance to build, to build this hall. It is a fitting venue, as this very building is a symbol of the friendship between the Pacific Island nations and Japan. Today, I would like to touch upon two main points. First, I would like to look back on the history and development of the relationship between the Pacific Island countries and Japan. Second, I, would, I will share with you Japan's renewed determination and commitment to the Pacific Island region and our hope to work together with you to promote good relations and to collaborate in building a better future for the entire Indo-Pacific region. Back in 1987, then Foreign Minister Kuranari gave a speech here in Fiji in which he announced what would later be called the Kuranari Doctrine. The doctrine outlined five key principles of Japan's cooperation policy with the Pacific Island region. These are namely, number one, respect for independence and autonomy. Number two, support for existing arrangement for regional cooperation. Number three, assistance in preserving political stability. Number four, provision of assistance to make the region more prosperous. And finally, promotion of people-to-people -people exchanges. It was Minister Kuranari who referred to us, the Japanese and Pacific Island Islanders, as the people of the Pacific. People brought together by this vast ocean in an enduring friendship that we have steadily developed over the years. One important development during that time is the initiation and evolution of the Pacific Islanders Leaders Meeting Process, or the PALM process. The PALM process is a series of summit level meetings held once every three years between the leaders of the Pacific Island countries and Japan. The PERM process began in 1997, 10 years after the announcement of the Kranari Doctrine. Through the PERM process, we have built close cooperation among us, forging a bond of friendship through candid discussions with an emphasis on the autonomy and independence of Pacific Island nations, we held a series of discussion on relevant topics from development to natural disasters and climate change, which we, the people of the Pacific, all must confront together. The PAM process has continued to evolve over the years to facilitate more frequent and more comprehensive dialogue. For instance, the PERM ministerial level interim meetings were launched in 2010. And last year saw the formal entry of the process of New Caledonia and the French Polynesia. The PERM process continued to evolve today. The Prime Minister Abe promised at the PERM 8 in May last year that we will hold this fourth PERM ministerial interim meeting in the Pacific Island 
region. So I am pleased to announce today that the fourth meeting will indeed take place here in Fiji in mid-2020. This will be the first time for a prime ministerial interim meeting to be held in the Pacific Island nation. The development of our friendship has also been demonstrated by the increase in number of Japanese embassies in the region. While there were only two embassies back in 1987, we now have a total of eight, and the next year we look forward to opening our ninth embassy in Vanuatu. Japan has long provided assistance for quality growth of Pacific Island countries, in particular, placing special emphasis on the development of human resource. Over the past 32 years, through programs run by the Japanese, sorry, the Japan International Corporation Agency, or JICA, more than 10,000 Pacific Islanders have visited Japan for various training programs, and over 3,700 experts have been dispatched to Pacific Island countries to support human resource development throughout the region. In addition, more than 4,300 volunteers have traveled to Pacific Island countries from Japan, lived with local people, and contributed to human resource development in their respective field. These include one Japanese volunteer who even went on to become a traditional high chief in a village in Samoa because he greatly contributed to steady water supply for the locals. And another who fell in love with Palau and ended up working there for 15 years, helping establish first recycling center in the country. Education is one of our priority areas over the last 32 years. Japan has helped to develop about 600 schools throughout the Pacific Island region. In Tonga, Japan built a dormitory for an institute of technology, making it possible for those living in remote islands to receive fine education. We have also provided assistance to USP, including the development of a system to deliver lectures via satellite. This time, I mean, this system is now helping all Pacific Island countries to access quality education provided by USP. Japan has also focused its attention on building quality infrastructure to bolster sustainable economic growth. Over the years, Japan has helped to develop nine airports as well as numerous ports and road networks throughout the region to improve connectivity among islands where isolation and the lack of connectivity remain pressing challenge. Japan has also consistently supported regional cooperation among the Pacific Island nations. As part of this effort, we have been engaged with the Pacific Island Forum, or the PIF, a key instrument for regional cooperation through regular dialogue since 1989. One prominent example of our close cooperation with the PIF is our provision of thousands of solar power system and seawater desalination units to all 14 Pacific Island countries. This assistance was provided through the Pacific Environment Community Fund which was established at the Palm Five in 2009. People-to-people -people ties are the foundation of wonderful relations between Pacific Island country and Japan. Since it was initiated in 2007, 
the Genesis program has been helping to nourish such ties between our nations through enabling visit to Japan by more than 1,500 university students from the Pacific Island region. Past and future participants in the Genesis program are the true bridge connecting the Pacific Island nations and Japan. Since 2002, 1,800 Japanese elementary and middle school students have visited Pacific Island nations on a government program, while over 1,000 children from the Pacific region have visited Japan. Every year, around 170 children visit Japan from Pacific Island on this program. The government of Japan has been providing such opportunities to the younger generation in a firm belief that children and young people are our future. Strong ties among our young people is a key to the strong and lasting relations. Over the 32 years, the role of Pacific Island country in addressing challenges such as climate change and maritime issues has rapidly expanding in the global area. Fiji hosting the ADB general meeting this May, Fiji chairing COP23 in 2017, and Papua New Guinea hosting APEC last year are all prime examples of the increasing international role of this region. Next year, Palau will host our ocean conference for which Japan will willingly provide its support. This brings me to Japan's renewed commitment to the Pacific Island region. It has become increasingly clear in recent years that the Pacific Island region plays a key role in pursuit of free and open Indo-Pacific vision. Japan is determined to play our part in ensuring that this region remains free and open. Building on the past 32 years of cooperation and our historical ties that go back over 100 years, I would like to call on all friends of the Pacific Island region to work together for a better future, a future that is active, opportunity-filled, and innovative. The first letters of these three keywords spell out AOI, Aoi, which means blue in Japanese, just like the color of my new favorite, what do you call it, blue shirt. And just like the English word blue in Japanese, that word aoi brings to mind image of the sky and the ocean. I hope we can join together in mapping out a blueprint for such an active opportunity field and innovative future for the Indo-Pacific region. Therefore, let us strive to realize the potential in the future, which is as vast as the Pacific Ocean itself. Looking to the future, guided by the keywords signifi signified by Aoi, the government of Japan has decided to increase commitment for the Pacific Island region. Cooperating closely with other partners such as Australia, New Zealand, and the United States, Japan will extend further cooperation to Pacific Island countries in the field of maritime issues, connectivity, and the climate change and disaster management. More specifically, Japan will promote stability and safety, support resilient and sustainable development, and increase active people-to-people exchanges. Japan will help to ensure stability and safety in the region. 
Japan will provide a capacity building for maritime law enforcement of government officials from Pacific Island nations. We will dispatch the Japan Coast Guard's mobile cooperation team to Pacific Island nations, just as we did early this year in the case of Palau, which, let me add, was the first time for us to collaborate in this way with a Pacific Island country. We will continue to provide cooperation for resilient and sustainable development in the Pacific Island region. We will try to boost connectivity in the region through quality infrastructure, such as Palau International Airport and Honiara International Airport in Solomon Island. Japan and Pacific Island countries share a vulnerability to natural disasters. For us, disaster management is critical. Japan has decided to provide additional assistance to the three Micronesian countries and Vanuatu. We will work the, with these countries to develop communication system for disaster management, to build disaster management center, and to procure equipment for the efficient delivery of health service to those affected by disasters. In addition, construction of the Pacific Climate Change Center in Samoa will soon be completed with a grant from Japan. The center will serve as a hub for human resource development to tackle the challenges posed by climate change throughout the Pacific Island region. Japan will contribute to capacity development through technical cooperation and build waste disposal facility to address waste management issues, including marine plastic litters. Sustainable economic and fiscal policies, including debt sustainability, is another important issue. We will therefore provide technical cooperation for greater fiscal resiliency for some Pacific Island countries. Japan also would like to emphasize people-to-people -people exchanges. I am pleased to announce that Japan will be inviting a total of 100 children from all over the Pacific Island region to the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Paralympic Games next year to watch. We will also resume Japanese language courses here at the USP, as trial Japanese courses will begin here at USP towards the end of this year. I would like to encourage all of you to take, take up the challenge to learning Japan, Japanese. The Genesis program is going to evolve this year. In addition to welcoming youth from this region to Japan. We will be sending young Japanese people to Pacific Island nation for the first time on this program. We look forward to a meaningful exchange on both sides. Through our renewed focus and commitment to ensuring stability and safety, supporting resilient and sustainable development, and promoting people-to-people -people exchanges. I am confident that we, the people of the Pacific, can bring a brighter future, an Aoi future, to the beautiful Pacific region that we call home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Kono. We are grateful that you did not allow the 32-year pause from the Pacific to become a 33 with your visit today. We're also grateful that the Suva weather was true to form, and because on a beautiful day, I think nobody can resist going into the ocean um, 
not even a, an avid diver like yourself. But we are sorry um, that you were bombarded by kava so early in your trip to Fiji. Um, I hope it doesn't put you off. Um, we will now move to the question and answer segment of this, of this program. Unfortunately, in the interest of time, um, and recognizing that Minister Kono's schedule will be quite tight, um, we will only be taking three questions. So if anybody has a question, please raise your hand. I think we have a question from there. Um, Elvis, would you like to start us off? Good morning, sir, and welcome to Fiji once again. My name is Elvis Kumar, and I'm uh, fortunate to have been part of the Kizuna and the Genesis uh, project. I have personally benefited a lot from these projects. However, my question this morning is, what impact or benefits is Japan seeing from the results of these projects? In the Pacific, we have seen how youths and students become culturally aware and very impressed by Japan and all it has to offer. But what are the benefits from Japan's point of view, especially when they continue to support these projects? Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, the Japanese and the Pacific Islanders, uh, well, the people of the Pacific, as Minister Kuranari said, 32 years ago. Uh, the Pacific Island region is um, culturally, historically, and economically uh, tied to Japan uh, many, many years. And uh, I, I think the basis uh, for the relationship uh, between Japan and the region has to be based on uh, personal people-to-people -people relationship. And these programs uh, provide uh, Pacific Island people the understanding of Japan. And by inviting you to Japan and uh, building exchanges, I think we can learn from those who came to Japan. And uh, alumni and the future member of Genesis, as I said, will be the bridge between Japan and the region. So we would like to continue uh, effort to keep this program going to the future. So we hope uh, many of you could participate in these programs and have a chance to visit Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? We'll take one from the, I'm sorry if I don't know your name, a red sleeveless shirt. Uh, good morning. I was also one of the fortunate students for the Genesis 2017. Uh, I just have a question, just one. Uh, what role do you see students and youths playing in achieving the innovative future for us in the Pacific? Thank you. Could you repeat that again? Oh, sure. Uh, what role do you see students and youths um, playing in achieving the innovative future for us people in Fiji Pacific? Well. I hope through this uh, Genesis program, uh, you uh, learned a new perspective and uh, hope you could bring those perspectives into the region and uh, work together among the Pacific countries and uh, with Japan and uh, be a connecting bridge to bring more innovation to the region and to Japan both ways. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I think we have time for one more question, if anybody else has a... We'll take one from the front over here, um, third row. With, if you could raise your hand high, please. Thank you. Good morning. My question is that the Genesis Project always has themes related to environment, disaster, and climate change. And considering this is a global issue, how do you see Japan and the Pacific working together to address this at the global level? Thank you. Well, uh, Japan has so many uh, kinds of disasters from volcano, earthquake, typhoon, flood, um, and the region is facing the similar uh, issues. And this climate change is going to affect us all. And uh, I think we really need to 
strive together to uh, achieve the Paris goal to prevent uh, uh, climate change. And there are a lot of things we can do together. And uh, this Pacific Ocean is a, a great source of uh, environmental stability and we need to keep it as it is. So I think the Japanese and the people in the region need to work together to preserve environment and create a balance between uh, uh, economic growth and uh, sustainable uh, environment. So if we could uh, cooperate in many issues relating to environment, climate change, and the disaster management, I think it will benefit uh, both people. So thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Kono. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for in terms of the question and answer session. Could we please give Minister Kona another round of applause? <laughs> for those of you who have questions regarding Genesis, there will be an information session that will take place at 10.30 this morning. So if you could wait about an hour, you'll be able to ask your burning questions. I would now like to invite Dr. Gilio Paunga, the Vice President, Regional Campuses and Estates and Infrastructure, to give the vote of thanks. この会も大臣、小村大使、アルワリア、USB、拡張、金主義、アジア大平洋、拡張、中村大洋、拡張、並びに小野茶会会長。本日は南太平洋大学にお越しいただきありがとうございます。Honorable Daro Kono, Minister of Staff Foreign Affairs of Japan, His Excellency Masahiro Omura, Ambassador of Fiji, Kenji Ganazuki, Director General, Asian and Oceania Affairs Bureau, Kohei Nagamura, Director of Oceania Division, His Excellency, <coughs> the Commissioner from Australia, and members of the Diplomatic Corps, Paul Alwalia, Vice President, and Vice Chancellor and President, members of the Senior Management, Heads and Representatives of the uh, Regional Organizations, Students of the Genesis Program, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the University of the South Pacific, the Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, staff and students, please allow me to move the vote of thanks. Honorable Taro Kono, Minister of Foreign Affairs from Japan, must thank you very much for the enlightening address this morning and the opening of the 2019 Genesis program. We are very uh, thankful. We've been uh, observing and watching you on TV everywhere, in the news worldwide, by the opportunity to visit USP, University of the South Pacific, within two days. And not only the first one for you to visit Fiji, but also it's a very important occasion to all of us here at the university. Your speech this morning has been very encouraging. It brings not only the uh, historical aspects of the importance of being a relationship between Japan and the people of the Pacific, but it also provides us with a lot of hope for the future of the people of the Pacific, especially the students here in front of you. So you may be aware that the um, University of the South Pacific consists of 12 countries. You have mentioned earlier of how 
you have assisted. Since 1987, the official visit of the former Prime Minister of <coughs> Minister of Foreign Affairs to Fiji, and it assist all the countries in the Pacific. These students here are mostly from all those Pacific Islands. You have really assisted them, especially with the uh, primary schools and, pri and secondary education. And when they finish from their countries, the only other place to go to, besides New Zealand and Australia, is attending at the University of the South Pacific. Honorable Minister, they are here. Thankful to the uh, support that you have provided them, enabling them to come, finish the secondary, coming up to take their tertiary education here at the University of the South Pacific. And I think they, it is <coughs> timely, and it's an optimistic time for us that you visit and be with our students to see how we're going to continue from here. You have developed them not only through Japanese language, but also Soroban. I recall being a young little kid in Tonga growing up. Before the 80s, in the 70s, our king was trying every possible way in order to bring together the relationship between not only Tonga, but also the Pacific and Japan. And he started with sumo. I'm very fortunate that I was not very big enough to be successful in the sumo, <laughs> because right now I would have stood here in front of you as a sumo player. We continue from there to the Soroban, which is flourishing right now, and also the Japanese uh, language. We continued from there to rugby, which we're going to be witnessing that in a month or two. And then now with the education, we're having a lot of hope, and we are looking as vulnerable people from the vulnerable island and seafarers from the Pacific Islands. We all look forward to Japan and your new commitment to us in the future. As alluded to earlier by the Vice Chancellor and President, the relationship with Japan is indeed a special and significant one, which the university is very grateful for. You had a commitment of the university to work in every close consultation and collaboration with the Embassy of Japan and China to realize our mutual development objective for the betterment of our lives, of our Pacific people. With your AOE program, with the <clears throat> opportunities creating, innovativeness and sustainability, Remaining our people here, freedom and independence is something very important. We are so encouraged by your kindness this morning and the words of hope. It is indeed an honor for us to continue our relationship and network with Japan and its people through such an exciting program like Genesis that you have just opened, launched today, the 2019. Our sincere appreciation to the government of Japan and its people for supporting this cultural exchange initiative. Honorable Minister, I'm one of those prior to Genesis program, but probably a first product of the uh, Japanese Monbu <coughs> Shogaku Shou, uh, Shogakukin Scholarship in Japan. I went to Japan to play rugby for Taito Bunga University and ended up that the government of Japan provided me an opportunity to see a little bit wider and broader. They sponsored my master's degree, and they also offered, if I'm successful with that, they're gonna provide me a Japanese scholarship to become a PhD. I graduated with a PhD in economics, University of Taito Bunga in 1996. From there, directly become a minister of the cabinet of Tonga. And a lot of us even here who finished from Japan are in leadership positions, not only in government and parliaments, but also some of our lecturers here, even professors, as product from the Japanese aid program. So I'm very thankful to you, also the ambassador, and all of you from the Japanese delegation from Japan. 
We believe this will gonna continue in the future. And I'm not gonna say individual important things that you have already, I hope everybody digested the um, wonderful opportunities that you have provided and a dream for us to make it come true after you leave. We believe that um, we've considered work and partners. Japan and USB is able to optimize the efficient use of resources and nullify any duplication of efforts. As you, we already believe that we cannot continue to be fed by spoon all the time. Honorable Minister, your aid to USP, university students and the staff are very, very innovative. The leader that you provide to us, we make 100 times more effectiveness of the aid that you are providing. What we are requesting is not to continue to feed us with spoon, but please continue to collaborate and integrate our cooperation, cooperation in order to provide opportunities for our students in the Pacific to come back as leaders in the future. We thank your official delegation and again visiting the university, the way best for your respective official engagement through the day and safe travel back to Japan. Last but not least, Honorable Minister <coughs> Kono, uh, I think the um, High Commissioner from Australia is here today, together with our fellow students here from Fiji, Samoa, and Tonga. If you ever get back to Japan, we have a common request. World Cup is coming up in <laughs> two months. What you have done to Fiji and the flying Fijian two weeks ago and to the Tongans in Kaledahi last week, we are asking together with Wallaby, please have mercy on our teams and the Pacific <laughs> people. Have a safe trip. Thank you very much. <laughs>